Hello everyone and welcome to this video. So in previous videos we had a look at how to get a handle on the file attachment and how to send it to OneDrive, SharePoint, SQL, email and all of that is working very well. But one of the first concerns that people raise when you start talking about sending files around automatically through systems is the size of these files. So this is what we're going to be discussing today to see how can we get to check the file size or the attachment size that's being uploaded. Right, so in order to do that we're going to go into one of our previous flow runs and we'll see that if we click on the trigger which is in this case the HTTP received you'll see that this gives us the outputs for this so that's very cool but you also see that it splits it in two sections so the one is the body object and the other one is the header object and if you scroll down in the header object there's some very nice info in here a very handy stuff but one of the things that you'll see is the content length and you'll see that this is 64,542 bytes so it's 64 and a half kilobytes and this is what we're then going to use to check the size of the attachment all right, so I know, yes, we are cheating a little bit because that is not only the size of the attachment, but it's also the size of the entire HTTP packet that is received. So it is cheating a little bit because there are other things in here that doesn't necessarily belong to the attachment size, but everything else in this request is text. So in, in relation to the size of the attachment, that really should be negligible. All right, so how do we get access to this then? Uh, we can see it in our header, and uh, to start using that now in our flow, let's go and edit this. Now we can see that we've got these actions, we've got our trigger, we've got the var attachment type, and this isn't actually defining the attachment. So, but what we might want to do is before that, go and initialize a variable. So you can either use a variable or you can use compose to do that. Um, I like variables, but it really is a personal a personal preference. So I'm going to initialize a variable and it's called it var attachment size. So it's going to be an integer and that's very important because we might want to compare it against certain rules where we might say that you're not allowed to upload files that are bigger than a meg or 10 megs or whatever the case may be. So we want to set it to an integer, which is essentially a number value. Let's go and just rename this action. So init var attachment size. Right, so now we're ready to go and write that expression uh, to just get an access or get a handle on the actual content size. So we spoke about the trigger body mult or multipart body before. But now we're going to connect to the trigger outputs. So that's built in function of flow to connect to the output section of that trigger. And we're going to now look for the headers object inside of that. And then inside of the headers object, we're going to look for the content length, uh, content length property and we're just going to put a question mark between those two so for whatever reason if it can't find the headers and it tries to tries to drill down into the the header that it doesn't fail in crash flow um, so we're telling it to you know just fail gracefully if it can't find the header when in this case most well it always will but if you write expressions get into the habit of doing this because um, there might be other instances where it doesn't necessarily find the parent property or, or parent um, object. Alright, so next thing we want to do is just turn this whole thing into an integer because we told the variable it's going to be an integer so we just want to make sure that it is and let's go to the end, close the bracket and click on OK. So let's go and test this and make sure we get a value open up Postman, send the file it seems to be happy And there is the attachment size we've been looking for, uh, 64K. 
So all of that is working very well. So next we can now go and actually do something with that value. So typically we'd go and add a condition. So let's add one. So under the control section, there's some very handy actions. So one of it's a condition. And we're now going to say if the var attachment size, so we're clicking the value section, and then under dynamic content, it automatically picks up that the var attachment size is a candidate for this value. So if that is less than a million, then life is beautiful and we can continue on the green side. So if yes, then proceed. But if no, then we actually want to stop this flow. And to do that, we're going to add a terminate action. So under the control uh, actions, there's one called terminate. And if we're going to fail the flow, so I'm going to return a 400 and we're going to say uh, message is attachment size cannot exceed one megabyte. Just copy that because we might need it just now. And then just before we terminate, we just want to tell whatever made the API connection that this thing is failing. So this terminate is internal to flow. It's not going to return something to the HTTP request. Um, this is just for uh, failing the flow in the history and then giving a reason why it flow, uh, failed. Um, but we also want to now go and just tell the th whatever made the response or the request that it did fail. So I'm going to give it a 400, which is essentially an error. And in the body, we can just go and say attachment size cannot exceed one megabyte. So we'll get to this response maybe a little bit later because you can elaborate on this and you actually should. But in this case, uh, it, should be, it should be sufficient. And because we've now built a response into this section, we actually just need to build one in right at the end as well. So that if it fails or if it succeeds, then we also know that it that, that it succeeded. So 200 is fine, and um, we can just say file uploaded. That's saved well and fine, no errors. Always happy to see that. So let's go and send a file that's smaller than a meg. File uploaded, and now go and choose one that's bigger than a meg. And we wait a second. Attachment cannot exceed one megabyte. So let's can have a look at that last flow run. Let's see that it failed. And here you can see that it triggered the response and then it terminated flow. So all of that is working very well. So I'm going to go and rename this because we might be adding more checks later on. Check attachment size. All right, and then just while we're on the condition, there are basically two ways to, to build these conditions. The one is, like we've done now, where every condition pretty much stands on its own. So we do a check. If it's true, then we do nothing, which means the flow would continue, right? If it's false, then we terminate the flow so that the flow doesn't continue. And the reason why we choose to do this is the other alternative is to build the rest of the flow and the rest of these actions into this yes result, which means that you'll have 10 actions within this yes. And inside of those actions, you might have more conditions, which will just drill down it or drill it down into different and more levels, which becomes difficult to read. But more importantly, it becomes extremely difficult to change. So let's say you want to tweak your flow and, and move things around a bit. It sometimes becomes challenging to understand what is dependencies on what is dependent on what um, if you're using these nested flows. So we prefer to do this if you, for whatever reason, no longer wanted this check, you'd simply go and remove it and or delete it, and it'll take it out of the flow without affecting anything else. So that is why we choose to do it in this way. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you found it valuable and that you'll join us in the next one where we'll drill down more into 
uh, OneDrive, SharePoint, and uh, and the rest of the topics. So thank you very much, and uh, hope to see you soon. Cheers. Bye bye.